we thought it'd be good just to have a public forum to let people uh, voice their opinion, and also we're going to let the uh, uh, we're going to allow some time for the uh, magistrates uh, to tell uh, to weigh in on it briefly as well. So uh, uh, a lot of effort has went into preparing this. It's been going on for several months. It began with the appointment of a panel here of uh, diverse people in the county that represented a, a, a broad spectrum of our uh, population, including the, all the key organizations like school board, chamber of commerce, industrial foundation, the uh, uh, bankers, uh, and, and county employees, uh, and all of that. Large business, small business. So uh, we're going to uh, have this forum to let, as, a, as an opportunity for people to lay the way in. You bet. You bet. I got you. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to ask you to uh, keep your comments to uh, three minutes uh, because of the number that we have, and uh, we must be done here by completely by 10 till 5 because we need a short break before the fiscal court meeting. Uh, first one on the sign-up sheet I want to ask to come up is uh, Joanna Shake. Come to the uh, microphone right in front of you here. And uh, tell us what you think of OCDA. Good afternoon. I'm Joanna Shake. I'm the, uh, the Director of Economic and Community Development at Grad. Um, I served on the Exploratory Committee. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm We're saying I can't hear. Is, is that the mic on? on? It's, it is on. Do I just need to speak louder? Uh, I'm Joanna Shake. I'm the Director of Community and Economic Development at the Grad Office. Um, I served on the Exploratory Committee. Um, to investigate the need for an economic development director in the county. And I just want to say that I do support the initiative. I think it's a wonderful idea. Um, I do believe that the county needs someone full-time looking at economic development for the industries and businesses within the county. I was in Frankfurt last week and met with folks from the economic development cabinet. One of the statistics they gave us, in 2006 they had 115 folks working at the cabinet. Now in 2014, that's been reduced to 70, which means that there just aren't as many resources available to our counties to work in economic development. For example, um, Corky Peak, the, the, the gentleman who is the economic development representative for the county, now has 20 to 25 counties, Ohio counties among those, to work on behalf of economic development initiatives. I, I strongly believe that the county needs someone to do the outreach efforts and to work in conjunction with the cabinet and folks like me at grad, but I, I think it's in the county's best interest to have someone work exclusively for economic development. Those are my comments, Thank you. Next, I'll call on Paul Sandifer, who was also on the exploratory committee, I believe. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, I was on, on the committee, and uh, like Joanna, I will say that I have to say I support the initiative as well. Uh, you know, I think I said in one of the early meetings, in a perfect world, we might could get something that was totally, and I think the word I used at the time was non-political, to have an organization to do economic development that did not have ties to any politics or anything, so that would not get in the way. But when you're using county money, we always realize in a perfect world, you know, the perfect world doesn't exist. We can't have that. People don't do the right thing. So we have to be transparency, transparent with government funds. My take on the a lot of the sessions we had was that this was the consensus of the group. No, everybody wasn't 100% on board. This is what we want. But when we looked at all the options we had and the different ways of working, it, it was, in my take, the consensus of the group that this was the best route to go for Ohio County at this time with the money we had to operate with. And uh, I feel like it's important. You go to some meetings. Uh, I know I work with Joanna on the grad board. And you go to some other meetings in Frankfurt, and they talk to you about, well, what's economic, what's going on in Ohio County as far as economic development? And it's like, well, the state's, we hope, is doing something. But there's not a face with the county here. I know we have a gentleman, uh, Kim, who's involved with the Greta through the Bluegrass Crossings, but there's still a lot of Ohio County, a lot of property, and a lot of development potential that is not 
bluegrass crossings. Also, you have a lot of smaller companies that may not be looking for the size of lots they're wanting to try to promote bluegrass crossings. You know, that's they're trying to set up and have a big employer there. But there's a lot of companies that come in and may have 10, 15, 20 employees. They can make a huge difference and an impact in this area when you get two or three or four of them. They're not, they don't fit the criteria of bluegrass crossing, but we have a lot of other potential here in the county. And I feel like we need to put a face with the county so they're out there pushing and promoting and plugging away for us. Uh, and I, I, again, like I say, no, this may not be what I would say the perfect way to do it, but the perfect way is impossible with the way times are today. And I feel like this is the best, uh, the best what we have to put together right now. And I, again, I feel that was the consensus of the group. So. Then I'm going to ask Renee Beasley Jones. She is from Kenergy. Uh, has spent most of the day in our county. Yep. Thank you for having me speak today. Economic development is very important to Kenergy. We spend on average about $100,000 a year. That's what we budget toward economic development. We have zero interest loans available to commercial and industrial members who do business inside our service area. We have three people who work in economic development, not counting our CEO. So you're talking about 145 person organization. That's how many employees we have. And we have a minimum of three who work on economic development in the 14 counties we serve. I wasn't aware that you didn't have an economic development person or someone who's dedicated to that purpose in your county. I will tell you, as I've always told Judge Johnston, that Kenergy, we do business here, we're a good corporate citizen. If we can help you with anything, we certainly want to support economic development in your county. We have economic development on our website. We'll be happy to help promote any sites that you have available for economic development. So I would encourage you and tell you that Kenergy is behind your efforts 100% for economic development. We support economic development in this region. Thank you. Now we're going to let the uh, magistrates weigh in. And then we, we still have a break before our uh, maybe a couple of committees let's get together. Yes. Yes. Uh, let's go ahead and start with uh, Kenny and come this way. Okay, I think everybody knows where I stand on it. And we've worked on this for the last six months along with a lot of other people. And uh, I'm proud to see the support here tonight. And also, uh, this country, democracy, we, we don't expect everybody to agree. I've never seen one issue yet on the court where we, uh, everybody in the county agreed on anything. So hopefully the majority agree that this uh, will see the will move our county forward in economic development. I look forward to uh, hopefully seeing the pass tonight and getting on with uh, board appointments and uh, uh, down to business. All right, uh, Director, uh, pretty soon. Thank you. Well, uh, I think everybody knows that I'm for it. I, we appointed a panel that I had a lot of confidence in that would come back with the right answers. And uh, I did not expect that one of the first things, one of the biggest deficiencies we had, deficiencies we had was that well, there was no economic development director. Uh, so, but when this committee weighed in on this panel that was appointed, and that was their finding, I agreed with them because I knew they had thought it out and researched it, and I had no doubt it was the right thing to do. I'm definitely for economic development. I'm just not for sure that we've got everything in, in order right now to make a decision of this magnitude. Uh, I hope that it works the best. Uh, I'm just a little bit concerned on a few issues with it, but uh, I'd say we'll let the majority of the people here decide and, and if they feel confident in it, then that's what it'll be. I hope, hope it's the best. Jason. 
Uh, I think everybody knows where I stand on it too. Also, uh, just a couple things. Ms. Joanna, yes. uh, the meeting the other day. Were you involved in the meeting? Which meeting? Last Thursday. I don't. I didn't know. I mean, we didn't know about no, it. No, I, I think I spoke with you. You said you, you had a no, prior I, meeting. No, I, I, just, I didn't know how that went. If you could brief us on. I'm sorry. Just kind of wondering how that meeting went. Uh, and as far as the money, what I was referring to as coal, I said, I'm hoping coal comes around too. But come uh, 2017, I think that's our last permit to mine. Uh, so that gives us three years. We rely a lot on our coal service money, a lot of extra things. We're fortunate enough we have that right now. What I'm trying to say is that coal will be gone someday. I'm hoping it changes. I'm hoping it turns around. But right now, we know we got the 2017. Uh, and uh, when it's gone, if we haven't started this, this gives us three years to get going, to get our money situated, uh, get things promoted, because uh, in three years, we might not have that extra money to start this. And I feel like, too, is uh, kind of what I could say, you can either, you can, you can sit back and we can do nothing, or we, we can try. And for one, one person up here, I, oh, I kind of means a lot to me, and I feel like you need somebody out there every day trying for you. So, uh, right now, I voted uh, for the first reading in uh, hopes that we would be able to make some changes. I uh, felt like the panel that was thought out uh, initially to bring this maybe to uh, a full-fledged plan was more diversified than the one that the uh, OC is proposing. Uh, yet, my vote's not needed to make this pass, so it doesn't matter which way that I vote. But. The online poll was very interesting to me. I did look at that before I came in today. It was 68% no to 32% yes. I think people just have a lot of unanswered questions. Uh, our infrastructure, our roads, our broadband, and also the condition of our, uh, you know, our sides of our roads and our uh, EMA director, uh, Charlie's doing a great job picking up what trash people dump, but things that people just let go on manicure to uh, also make the things around our county not look as presenting. Um, I think you're exactly right about that. There's a lot of points that have been made here, but like I said, uh, I'm glad that Kenny was able to get with Larry and make the appropriate changes to get Larry's vote, and I'm certainly glad that uh, uh, OC is going to happen. I hope that it, it is successful, but it will be successful without my vote. Thank you. And then I say one thing, I'd just like to say, you know, a lot of people says that that's one thing to kind of, a lot of people say that we're sliding things through. We did have a forum and, and you saw the people, it's been on the radio, it's been on OC Monitor, we've talked about it in the newspaper. Uh, it's open records here, you're, you're more than welcome to come and pick up a copy of it anytime you want. Uh, this isn't like it's not it's the first time we've talked about this and it's, uh, I just want people to know is it's not like we're trying to slide something by. It's out there. It's on our website. It's things are there for uh, if you want a copy of it. It was there for you to have. There's a copy stand here tonight. But Jason, this is the first first public meeting, correct? It is the first public, yes. Okay. So But I mean we have it's been talked about in the court meeting. This is the first public point. I know that. Yes. You read the how many I mean how many forms see that on how many forms do we have though before have well, two more. I think voting on it immediately after the first and only public hearing is kind of taking it for granted, if you want. And what you said, kind of slight. I think you need more than one public meeting because now we'll go back and we'll talk to our neighbors and friends and we'll say what's going on. Obviously, there's probably 45 people in here. That doesn't rep represent them now. Uh, it's a big part of the community. I know it's hard to get people to come, but you haven't had time to digest what you've heard in this meeting. Mr. Martin? Dave? Uh, you have not. Good thing. Could I ask yes, Mr. Martin one question? I know you didn't sign up to speak tonight, but could well, you I give us. I didn't think I'd have time. Huh? I didn't think there'd be enough time. Oh, well, I, I for one would like to hear your position, and, and I know you're. Uh, involved in quite deeply with the economic development that has went on here for the last 30 years. Let me address as much time as I have. And I'm trying to get 
afraid I'm going to be uh, uh, not too positive about what you're proposing. I do think it's a great thing that you're setting up this fund in the savings tax and payroll tax. I'll remind you that we have a payroll tax because of the work done by the Industrial Foundation to get that in. That was the only solution we had to get Purdue in. We, we took a lot of heat for that. And we're taking a lot of heat and always have election time. Because everybody wants jobs. You go to any place in this country at election time, and everybody's running because they're going to get jobs. Well, I'm going to tell you, we've got jobs. The problem we have is we don't have enough qualified, educated, skilled people to bring in the better paying jobs. I've dealt with this now going on since 1962, one capacity or another, and I can tell you uh, that the work done by the Industrial Foundation is, is outstanding across the state. For a rural county, the Industrial Foundation has had as much success as any organization that deals with uh, industrial and economic development. Produced here because of the fight and leadership of the Industrial Foundation. Bluegrass Crossing is here because that was a project that we took on to help support it and with the county. Whenever the county has worked with the Industrial Foundation, we've had great success. Best example is in the early 90s when W. Cooper was judge. All the, all the industrial development that occurred during that time was led by the Industrial Foundation. It's a board of 15 people. How, how much more? Uh, Diversification do you, do you want? You've got a school board superintendent, you've got a representative of the hospital, you've got the bank's representative, you've got several of our larger businesses representative, and they can do the job. The problem was they were cut out of funds by the <coughs> court decision uh, when the 20-year uh, bail field renewal came around. The argument was that the, that the Industrial Foundation had gotten 50, 50 cents of every ton that belonged to the county. It didn't. That deal was made, and I, I drew up the contract with Bellfield, which was done by Andy and others, uh, to get a 50 cent in support of the Industrial Foundation. That was not the county's money. Uh, the, the rumor and misunderstanding got started that it was, and it wasn't. The county had already made their deal with Addington Brothers to start trying to get a regional uh, land field. So this body took the money that had supported the Industrial Foundation so they don't have any operating funds. I can tell you that with the Industrial Foundation activities and experience and, and the diversification, working with another board that this county set up, just a court, the Ohio County Industrial Authority, which is a six-member board, but has been inactive for about six years. But that organization, which is your organization, has a lot more authority under the statutes, I them right here, to finance industry. They can float bonds. They can do a lot more if you had, if you would reactivate that, working with some funding that they had would have to uh, either hire a float. I don't think. Quite frankly, uh, you can get by with about half the budget you suggested here for a consultant working in economic and industrial development and a full-time secretary. You can do the same job with the existing organizations for a lot more than what you're going to be spending for this new unexperienced uh, uh, board that's going to have to learn how to get things done. So I would, I would ask you to reconsider this. I do not think it's needed. I do think there needs to be some funds so the industrial authority can operate with the industrial foundation. That's 15 members on the industrial foundation, experienced, have been very successful. There's not much that's happened to get jobs in High County in the last, since 1966, that hadn't been led by the industrial foundation. Problem is, their budget's been cut out, and they can't, can't operate without some funding. But they don't need any kind of funding you're talking about. So, please give it, I hope, some more thought. Uh, look at the way you can save about half of what you're budgeting here, 
to do as good a job, if not better, than what an organization that would be a whole new organization uh, will have to learn, find the right person, and get, uh, get into industrial development, hopefully somewhere down the road. I, I apologize. I want to make clear again, I do support strongly the uh, allocation of funds from severance tax and the payroll tax. That's something the Industrial Foundation has supported, particularly since Armstrong Cole came in. And uh, that's probably would be helpful, although that's not a great solution. There's a lot of places, Owensbrook being the best example, that has plenty of funding of that nature. And most of it they haven't found a way to spend. So the key is to have an aggressive organization with the right leadership and enough money to operate uh, as this industrial foundation was able to do when it was adequately funded. Mr. Mark, could I ask you one last question? Uh, on, uh, could you give a brief explanation of Bluegrass Crossing and Grita and the work that, that is going well, about you, for the community? <coughs> that, that's an important point. Uh, your prime location for industry is Bluegrass Crossing. They have a, a consultant that, that is available and knows his way around Frankfurt. Folks, if you don't know how to get things done in Frankfurt, you can't do industrial development. Uh, we've had a few occasions where we've had uh, people show up, but we always end up going back to Frankfurt to help us, help them find a way to get some funding, particularly a tax uh, rebate. I want to point out another thing. There's been some comment about uh, the biggest difficulty with industrial development is usually startup companies. Because they don't have funds, and you, you, you've taken a risk a couple times when you had some adequate funding to help. But the best example of a startup company is a company Mr. Law got going here. He worked with the Industrial Foundation, Kim Lawson, and Steve Gary on our board helped him get on his feet and have a place to operate. So that's a prime example of the success of the Industrial Foundation it was a startup company. Now, there's not anything that you can't accomplish by working with the Industrial Foundation and, and putting into effect your industrial authority. So that has a, a broader expanse of power than you can get it by your ordinance. That's the statutory powers that they have. So those two things with, like, with half the funding you're talking about, and you can have a very aggressive, successful industrial economic development program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The only thing I will add to that is uh, we do not take anything away from the Industrial Foundation and do not want to compete with it. Uh, we want to enhance it. And of course the Greta Board already knows we work with them. Bob's here. And, Wayne Neal was, and, and I've uh, kept them informed on this all along, and they know that we'll work with Greta uh, and the Industrial Foundation to the fullest uh, capacity. Uh, that concludes our public hearing. Well, well uh, I've got everybody that was there, so I'm going to go ahead and conclude it. I agree. That was one of the things I had on my list, to give the money back to the Industrial Foundation because they're already doing this and have brought jobs here and let them do it because they can do it cheap. And the gentleman right over there about the meeting, that was another thing I had. Give us at least two more public meetings. That's two votes. That's a month. You could wait that long, sure, and let the people vote and let the people speak up about this. And then if the people want it, more power to them. Everybody wants the industry and good paying jobs here, but let's do it in a more feasible way. And, and like Frank said, they've got the people in the position now to do it, and you don't have to let them get it. I said it was well thought out. I talked to a magic today, man. and we talked this very same thing. A magic, not a magic. He wasn't matched on the other court, and we went over a lot of this stuff today, and that's exactly where it stands. Give the people that's got the ability to do it and let them do it. And educate our kids and have them ready to go to work. I assure you that's all part of it. Yeah. Okay. Ernie and Frank, I uh, respect what the Industrial Foundation, uh, Industrial Foundation has done in the past, but uh, 
I don't think we want to go back to the same thing. When I was on the court last time, 2003-2006, the Industrial Foundation was funded with landfill money, and you hired Dudley as the consultant. During those four years, I don't remember much going on with economic development. And uh, if we funded again, which I don't know if this court, I don't think they would have to start with, or wouldn't have went through this process of coming up with the for this organization, uh, I think it was a problem with transparency. People did not know what was going on. Uh, there was a lot of things that we're talking about doing, the skills training, the working with uh, the workforce training. Uh, I never heard anything about it to Industrial Foundation. Uh, so I'm just going to say if we thought that would have been the best possible way to have done this, I would have tried to go to court well, I don't know. I can remember this though. When my sons were in high school, they had electricity, they had auto mechanics, they had all kinds of stuff for vocational school. Not just for the kids in school. People that are 25, 30 years old are going to learn something. Give them a chance to learn this and have them ready to go to work. Not bring an industry in here and then bring the employees from Davis County or or. Warren County or Litchfield or wherever. Workforce training is a part of this, aren't you? Yeah, that workforce training is right. a big part of this. This, uh, this concludes this public hearing. We're, we're, uh, we've everybody had their stake, and, uh, and we'll be back here in 15 minutes for a fiscal court meeting. Thank you. agenda is the second reading of the OCDA ordinance number 2014-3. Uh, Kenny. Yeah, I'd like to make that motion. Uh, I have a second on passing the second reading of the OCDA ordinance. Second. Second. Motion by Kenny, second by Jason to approve the second reading of OCDA number 20, uh, ordinance number 2014-3. I ask a question there before we do that. Hold on. If if this person who ever may be goes out and recruits finds an industry that wants to locate here, where do they have any land? Where are they gonna where are they gonna go to to locate, physically locate this person? This that, that's all part of this board and part of this uh, director's job. They they will answer that question and bring it to us before we issue any checks. Well, I just, I mean, I would we'll be working with Drita also. Working with Drita and the Grant. The Grant's Crossing. The Grant's Crossing. 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 And hopefully working with the Industrial Foundation on their assets. Uh, of course, uh, if it's private property, you know, we'll have to deal with it. And it's not just limited to the Bluegrass Crossing no. either. It can be anywhere in the county. So that, could, that will be decided or looked into by this group that we're trying to impound. Trying to, this board we're trying to appoint, so I'm trying to say. No further discussion, let's do a roll call vote. Bullock? Yes. Thomas? No. Ham? Yes. Autry? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Kenny? No. The motion passes four to the ordinance passes four to two and uh, I will sign it into you got a copy of the <coughs>